Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. We've just got our TR6 out of storage and already there's a couple of problems. Um, nothing major, the fuel and the temperature gauge are both reading on the low side and I've got a sneaky suspicion that that's going to be linked to a faulty voltage stabilizer on the back of the speedometer. And so I thought this might be a good opportunity to take out the voltmeter. Uh, one of the things that I see nonstop on the forums is people trying to correct problems with their car, usually by adjusting the carburetors or replacing parts and throwing pieces at it. And the biggest reason that these things get a bad reputation, especially on the Lucas Electric side, is because people don't understand how to properly diagnose a problem. So they just throw parts at it. Uh, so I wanna try and change that. I'm gonna pull out the voltmeter. I'm gonna give you guys kind of a, a, a demonstration on how to use it. Uh, it's capable of much more and m going much more in depth than what we're about to do, uh, but it'll at least give you an idea of what you can test and how to diagnose a problem so that you're not spending money on parts. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna need is going to be to get your tools out. Uh, start with your voltmeter. This is mine, or one of mine, I should say. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different settings on this. You can look at, on this one, you can look at AC volts too, but the section we're concerned with is gonna be this DC volt range. Um, and this just kind of gives you an idea of the range that you're looking at. So you can go with millivolts, you can go zero to 20 volts. This is the section that you're probably gonna use more off, most often with your car. You can go 200 or even 600 volts in terms of your range. And that's pretty typical for most of these, but generally if you're trying to read volts, stick with the 20. Down here then, uh, this is ohms. So this is measuring resistance. And this is gonna be useful for uh, testing spark plug wires, identifying your coil. Uh, it's also gonna be good for finding out if you have uh, an open or a closed circuit. And so even if you don't have 12 volts on the car, if you have it set to resistance and you have an open circuit, it should go down to, sorry, and you have a closed circuit, it should go down to zero because there's no resistance between those wires. If you have burnt contacts or a loose connection, you might find something more like this or maybe where it's partial kind of in between. So that's what the ohm settings are, are for. And those are generally what you're going to be using. And so the way to use this is we're gonna just do a quick test to measure voltage here. I'm gonna set down just a battery and we should see something in the neighborhood of 12 volts with this, 12.6. So we've got a charged battery here and your voltmeter is going to tell you how much voltage you're getting across. Uh, now this is gonna be important. Uh, you can use a test light, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but this is gonna be important if you're trying to do things like voltage drop tests or to diagnose gauges like what we're gonna be doing. You need this, you can't do it with just a test light. Uh, but if you are in the, if you are interested in a test light, I've got one here. Show you how that works. Basically, it's just a light bulb. You complete your circuit by going, attaching to both positive and negative. And if your circuit is uh, closed, the light bulb will light up. If it's not touching, you got a bad connection, uh, bad ground, something like that, then the bulb isn't going to light up. It's as simple as that. So if you just wanna see if something works, if it's hooked up properly, uh, test light is awesome. Uh, sometimes you can kinda of see, assuming you don't have an LED one, you've got an incandescent bulb like this, you might even be able to see as the light lighting up dim. Uh, if it's lighting up dim, you might not be getting a full 12 volts. So it's useful to have, I love having these in my car. Uh, it's a piece that doesn't really take up much space at all. Throw it in the toolkit, keep it in the back of the car, and this will be helpful to diagnose some problems on the road if you need it. So the other thing, of course, that you're gonna be using in addition to these tools is your shop manual. And I've just pulled out this one here. I like to use the actual shop manual. So, so uh, I've got a Bentley manual for uh, my TR6. Uh, actually, I've got some that I printed off from online too. You can find those and they're even color coded, but this is representative of what a lot of you might have. And so uh, here's how to read it. You've got all these lines on there and generally these numbers, not generally, these numbers are going to t go to this key. It's gonna refer to that and it's gonna tell you what you're looking at. So we're having trouble with the temperature and the fuel gauges. We're gonna to wanna to look for those. Uh, so let's just browse through here. 
there we go, 45 is the temp gauge, and it looks like 47 is the fuel gauge. So if we look on the chart, here they are, 45, 47. And there's a color code down here. So if you've got a black and white one, just make sure you're paying attention to these. That's gonna tell you the color of the wires. And on the temperature gauge, which is right here, you're going to have two wires going into it. So there's a light green wire with a green stripe. That's what you see if you see uh, LG slash G, light green with a green stripe going on one side of it. That's gonna go to both, uh, it's gonna actually connect with both gauges. And then you have, it looks like a green wire with a blue stripe coming out the back. Uh, if you're looking at the fuel gauge, it's a green with a red stripe. And then 46 and 48, that's the temperature transmitter and the fuel tank unit. Basically, those are the sending units. Uh, is, is how I would say it. Those are the sending units. So the way the fuel circuit works is you have power going into the gauge. It is going through a variable resistor, kind of like a, a dimmer switch, you might think of it on the, on the wall, and then it's going to ground. And so if that dimmer switch is turned down, the gauge is going to read lower. This is really just a voltmeter. And so that's, that's how this is going to work. And if your fuel gauge isn't working at all, you're gonna to wanna to see, well, are you getting power to the gauge? Is the power going from the gauge to the sending unit? Is the sending unit grounded properly? And so that's how you would diagnose it. You could do that with either the voltmeter or the test light. We're gonna use a voltmeter. And one thing now for diagnostic purposes, I, I've noted we've got a problem with both gauges. They're both reading low. And so that could be down to a variety of reasons, but let's look and see what they've got in common. They both connect to each other, so there's this wire here, but this is where they're getting power. It's coming from this number 44, so let's look that up. 44 is the voltage stabilizer. Uh, what the voltage stabilizer does, um, these gauges operate on zero to 10 volts. It's not 12. But the battery in your car and the alternator or generator, if you've got one of those, is going to be producing more than 10 volts. And so the job of this is to take that down to an even 10 and keep it there. If your alternator's pumping out 14 volts, your gauges are gonna read too high. So we don't, we don't want that, we want it to just go up to 10. In my case, both gauges are reading low. Now that's more of an unusual problem with these, but I suspect that this isn't going to be putting out 10 volts, it's gonna be something less than that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if I'm right, I'm gonna teach you how to do that with a voltmeter, and maybe we can get the gauges working properly. Um, so, but just a quick note, you need a wiring diagram for your car. You need to have a voltmeter or a test light. Uh, this is, as I've said it before, this is as important a part of your toolkit as a screwdriver. Uh, you absolutely have to have one of these. Otherwise, there's gonna be problems on your car that you're just not gonna diagnose right, and you're gonna throw parts at it. You're gonna waste a ton of money. You can find these at a hardware store for like 20, 30 bucks. They are not expensive. There's no excuse not to have one. So if you haven't got one, go get one. Okay, so there's an important thing to note. If you're gonna have the ignition switch to your car on for any length of time, especially if you're running points, some electronic ignition systems are different, but especially if you're running points, disconnect the wire going to your coil. And the reason you want to do that is because if you don't, uh, you're going to be charging your coil potentially while the car is sitting there. You could burn out the points, you could burn out the coil, you could cause issues with your ignition system. So just unplug it before you turn the key on. Okay, now back at the back of the car, we've got a ground with our test light. The key is on. And so what we want to do, you'll notice there's two contacts. We want to touch both of those, and one of them should light up. Okay, let's just pull the wire off, shall we? That might make it a little easier. Oh, so we don't have a bad ground. Take a look at that light bulb. And I don't know if you could see it, but it's just barely kind of flickering. And so that kind of would confirm what I suspect here. Let's test it out with our voltmeter. Because this hasn't gone through the other side of the fuel gauge yet. 
So we should have 10 volts coming in here. And instead it's kind of fluctuating around, but I'm seeing an average of like five or six. Now let's wait for just a second because the fuel gauge could be faulty. Uh, we could have an issue with the fuel uh, sending unit circuit that's going to the gauge and back, but we know there's another gauge that's potentially having the same problem. And so we should be able to see the same thing under the hood by the temperature gauge. Let's take a look at that. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna use our test light, which isn't strictly what we're after for this, but that's okay. Again, you get kind of a flickering light. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but it's really not all that bright. Let's see what the voltmeter says. Try and set it there so that you can see it. And that should be our positive, and all we need is the ground. We happen to be next to the battery, so we'll just use that. And see, we're getting the same thing. It's fluctuating between about four and close to seven volts, but it's definitely not going up to 10. And so that, to me, says that both the fuel and the temperature gauges are getting erratic readings. They're both affected by the same problem. So I think it's pretty clear what we should try next. Don't forget to plug this back in, of course. I think we need to switch the voltage stabilizer out on the back of the speedometer and see if that helps. Now, I'm absolutely not going to show you on camera how to get the speedometer out and, and crawl around under the dash because it's a pain in the butt and I don't want to. Uh, I am going to do it. It's just very difficult to see on camera uh, how you get it out. So I happen to have another speedometer here. The voltage stabilizer is this gizmo on the back. And when you get the speedometer out, or technically, if you've got enough room, you don't even have to do that. There's a flathead screw here. Just unscrew it, take the voltage stabilizer out, put the new one in. Uh, put the wires back in exactly the same spots that they were in before. And there may even be, yeah, on this one you've got uh, marking. There's typically instructions that come with these when you buy a new one. So. Uh, Pull out the old voltage stabilizer, take the wires off, put the wires on the new one, screw it back to the back of the speedometer, reinstall, you should be good to go. Uh, so I'm going to tackle this on the car and hopefully I don't hurt myself doing it. I'm going to need some light and to crawl under there. talk about important parts of your toolkit and you should keep several sets of reading glasses all over the place so you can see what the hell you're doing that's more like it okay now we can see what we're doing and I forgot the tools over there. Okay, that's done. Let's test it and see if we've got any better going to the gauges. Well, first things first, turn on the key. Again, make sure your coil is disconnected. Let's get out our voltmeter. Okay. Positive is in, key is on, and here goes nothing. Okay. It's not 10 volts, but 8.9 roughly, and I will take it. As you can see, it's a lot more consistent than it was before. Uh, and 9.34, and it's consistent here too. Okay, so I'd say we're in good shape. One thing to note, the original style voltage stabilizers were a mechanical device and they kept the voltage constant by having a set of contacts that would open and close. 
and it would do it at exactly the right rate to keep it at, at exactly 10 or close to it. And so we're using a digital voltmeter. That's going to explain the reason that it was fluctuating, but it was still fluctuating a bit more than I'd like, and it was still too low of a reading overall. And so one way or another, it was broken. Uh, hopefully this corrects it, and I can depend a little bit more on my fuel gauge now. Okay, bonus material here. These are, this is a voltage stabilizer that I know doesn't work. This is actually one that was on that same car, not the one that just came off of it, but that's okay. And what we are doing, as you can see, we're grounding it. So we've got our wire going to the negative terminal on the battery, and that's just going to the body of the gauge. Then you have an I and a B side. B is for battery, I is for indicator. So just make sure that it's not touching where you're going to short circuit anything and you can connect it with some alligator clips to the battery and on your voltmeter then that should go to negative terminal there and when you touch it to the indicator side you should see something around 10 volts I know we're not going to yeah look at that a little over a half a volt so these do fail this is actually one that's relatively new and it's not getting up to 10 volts. In fact, it's not even getting it to one. So this isn't gonna register anything on the car. It's not gonna be helpful. And while we're at it, let's just test the one that's on the back of this gauge. Again, B is for battery. Make sure you're not short circuiting anything. And now this one is, is an older one, so this is probably going to fluctuate on the gauge here, but that's okay, that's normal. Yeah, see we're getting 12 and change volts. So this is an example of one that is just permanently open. Oh, maybe not. Nope, see it's fluctuating. It's going momentarily up to 12 volts, dropping back down, back up to 12. You've got a needle that if it was analog, you'd see it doing this, but it's gonna be doing it very quickly and it's gonna be averaging right around 10 volts. So I suspect this one is working properly. That's what I would expect to see. So now we know we've got a reasonable spare on the back of this gauge if we ever needed it. The point of this video was to show you how to use one of these voltmeters and you really can't be working on your car without one of these. It is every bit as important as a set of screwdrivers or your wrenches. Um, you absolutely have to have it because most of the time when you have an issue with your, with your car, whether it's a Triumph, MG, Healy, whatever, it's gonna be electrical in nature. You're going to need this to be able to diagnose problems. Otherwise, you're going to end up just throwing money blindly at the problem. Uh, you could use this to diagnose all sorts of things. You put it on the battery, see if your alternator's working. You could do like we did and analyze gauges. Even if part of the, uh, maybe you're looking at a switch and it's not even in the car and you want to know, is it working before you go through the trouble of pulling it apart and installing it? you'll be able to see if that's working using the ohms and resistance section on this voltmeter. So that's going to be very important. And then the other thing is your test light. And you're going to want to make sure that you've got it. I'm going to give you a bonus uh, little section here as well. And that is looking for grounds. Uh, what we did before was we connected this to any, any surface that should be grounded. But now, let's put it on the positive side. And the reason I want to do that is because we are going to check and see if something is grounded. So engine should be good, like we expected. The alternator casing, uh, various bolts around the car, obviously the battery itself. So this is going to be a good way. Just hook it up to the positive side of the battery. Anything metal that you touch that's supposed to be grounded should light that up. And distributor casing. There you go. So if your distributor is not firing, one of the things you'll want to check is, is your distributor properly grounded? We just made sure of that. Tail lights. Uh, if you've got a bulb not working, that's how you would find it. You would find out, do you have a bad ground by hooking up one side of this to something positive and touching what you expect to be negative uh, with the test light. It works for, for positive ground vehicles too. You just obviously reverse those terminals, plug it into the negative instead of the positive, same thing.
But that's all I've got for you this week, guys. Uh, if you've got questions, post it in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that sort of fun stuff. Let us know what have you been able to diagnose with your voltmeter, with your test light. And hopefully we'll see you on the road. Take care. And I forgot the tools over there. I'm just going to live here now. Yep, just going to live here. Okay, good night. See you next week on the channel. Like and subscribe. You get the idea. Somebody help. Oh my god.